Okay, Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay, is the latest from the DC Animated Universe. This one is rated R. And this is R for a pretty extreme level of violence. Uh, in one of the opening scenes, the team of Punch, Julie, Vertigo, Deadshot, and uh, Black Manta all kind of get involved in a, in a pretty good altercation. And Julie's jewel pretty much is a laser that cuts everybody. So you're seeing fingers cut off, people being cut in half. So this is violent. Lots of people get shot through with bullets. Rocky, they did this live action, it would have almost like a Deadpool kind of level of violence to it. So of course, again, you get a lot of focus on, on Deadshot. Still weird here to be Christian Slater's voice. That's that's kind, kind of bizarre. Because I hear his voice, I picture him specifically. That's not who I picture as Deadshot. So a lot of focus on him. So again, he becomes kind of a, a central character with a lot more development. Waller sends them off to find a very specific card. I can't do what the card does because it ruins the vast majority of the movie. But nice array of villains. The discussions they do between Bronze Tiger and Deadshot are very good. I say Deadshot gets a lot of character development. Bronze Tiger is right up there when it comes to character development. They do also use continuity from other DC animated films, which I thought was really, really well done. <clears throat> there are certain things that are kind of off, and then you find out why, and it directly relates back to other films, so they have, they have a DC animated, almost expanded universe, which is really good. If you've liked the, the previous ones, this one's right up there. Ironically, I still don't understand why DC can do a fantastic job on the cartoons, and the animated films, but they don't take these scripts and go, what if we just did this live action? What do you mean? If you took this film, or Suicide Squad Assault on Arkham, and made those the live action films, they would be incredible. All I would do with Copperhead, he was a contortionist who also did the body modification, and his character is done this incredibly stoic way of doing it. He's like, bored. And I was like, that, I kind of dig that. Because normally he's done as a th you know, everything has like a this th no, no, this movie is just... It's like, well, if you're the guy who's into heavy body modification, like biomechanical modification, yeah. They work in enough other characters. Few characters come off kind of bizarre. They equally, well, they try to equally offend both genders, but again, you have Harley Quinn, depending on your thoughts on her. You might think they're more offensive to the female gender than the male gender, but they do kind of hit both of them at least equally enough. And plot is done, plot is done very well. The ending works. Actually, the double ending works very well. I still can't fully let me figure out why they can do this in less than an hour and a half. Make a concise, to the point film with about a dozen different characters. Do enough to help you figure out. If you don't know who they are, it's like, here's this person, he should be doing this, here's this person, here's their abilities, here's their relationships, and it works out in a quick, neat, easy package. You know, throw ten more minutes into this, make it live action, and there you go, you've got your hundred minute long film. 